What up, YouTube? Let's hear. Thanks again for visiting the channel. As always, I appreciate it. Uh, if it's your first time visiting the channel, do me a solid. Please subscribe. I'd appreciate that. Uh, I've been doing this for about five months, still trying to grow the channel. Uh, so again, if you're uh, just visiting for the first time, please subscribe. I'd appreciate that. Um, real quick, before we get started with the video, I just want to ask everybody, uh, I'd like to be a little more interactive with you guys. Uh, so I was thinking maybe uh, if you guys want to, you know, maybe if there's something you haven't seen on the channel yet, or if there's something you know of that I don't have, uh, and you'd like to see a review on it, uh, just look, do me a favor, let me know in the comments. Uh, and I will do my best if I can get a hold of it. I will, uh, you know, do a review on on whatever it is that uh, that you guys would recommend. Uh, if it comes down to buying it and I'm able to buy it, then I'll most certainly do that. Um, and if I can borrow it from somebody, then I'll do that as well. Uh, so hopefully uh, that will work out. Um, so anyway, uh, today we're going to be doing a review on the CJRB Tigris. Uh, this is a budget. Uh, budget knife. Um, CJRB is the budget brand for artisan cutlery, uh, and this is a really cool knife. I uh, I, I saw this uh, when I first started getting into collecting. Um, I think maybe a year and a half, maybe two years ago. I think this guy came out, uh, and uh, I had to have it, so um, I bought it. Um, this particular uh, variant, um, they do not make a red one. Uh, I bought the white one. Uh, I came with white, white and black scales, and uh, I, I just um, took this guy apart and I dyed the, uh, I writ dyed the scales red. I think it looks pretty good. Um, as you can see, this knife has been used very, very well. Um, I've had it, like I said, for over a year, maybe two years, and I've, I've beat the hell out of it. So you can see that. So it's definitely not a brand new knife that I'm showing you guys, uh, but it is still available. Um, I'm going to try to link this guy um, if I can figure out how to do that. Uh, but uh, as you know, I'm not very uh, tech savvy. So uh, if I can't do it, then you know I'm going to mention where they're available anyway um, towards the end of the video here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the CGRB Tigris uh, comes in at an overall length of uh, 8.5 inches. Uh, with a blade that is uh, approximately three and a half inches with a, a, a cutting edge that's about three and a half inches as well. Uh, so pretty good ratios. Um, up against, uh, sorry, compared to the um, Ontario Rat Model 1, the Rat's a little bit longer. Well, maybe, maybe about the same length if you consider the uh, little lanyard thingy here. Uh, compared to the Rat Model 2, it's obviously going to be much, much shorter than this guy. The, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Demco models, the 8020S, that one's going to be about the same length again. And uh, uh, compared to the uh, 8020.5, that's obviously going to be quite a bit shorter. And last but not least, the Spider Codes. You've got the uh, PM2 here. That's going to be a little bit shorter, just a hair. And the pair of three is obviously going to be quite a bit shorter. Carry profile, length, height, and thickness. This guy. I think the uh, handle for the PM2 is just about the same length as the handle for this guy, and the pair of three is going to be a little bit shorter. All right, thickness. The Tigris is going to be slightly thicker than the pair of three. And carry height, or sorry, the height for the blade is actually going to be just a hair taller than the pair of three. You don't see that very often. So this very tall blade. Uh, which is one of the reasons I liked it, to be honest. It's, it's just a, a huge cleaver blade on this guy, and I really, really in, enjoyed the way the aesthetics of this guy. I like the way this looked a lot. Um, the branding or the CGRB part, as you can see, is kind of uh, starting to fade a little bit on this guy. Uh, so, like I said, very, very well used knife. Um, let's get a weight on this guy. 
see if we're zeroed out first. I don't know how we keep getting changed here. It's grams, milliliters, pounds and ounces. There we go. Zeroed out. So this guy comes in at 6.1 ounces, which isn't too terribly heavy. Pretty good in the pocket, even though it's a little bit taller than most knives. And the blade stock thickness. Make sure this is zeroed out. That's good. All right, let's see here. So that's coming in at 125 thousandths. So that's pretty good. Um, the hardware on this guy, you're going to have a T8 for the pivot, and all the rest of the body screws are going to be T6s. Um, you got two screws here for the pocket clip, which I don't have on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and this guy is running on bearings, as most budget knives will be. Um, the blade here is uh, Artisan Cutlery's or CGRB's proprietary uh, AR RPM 9, which is a powder form steel. Uh, and this is a cleaver profile blade um, all day long. Uh, I like, I love this blade. This blade is so cool. It's very tall, um, but it's not super duper thick. And uh, it, it kind of starts towards the top uh, as a flat grind. It gives you plenty of room all the way down here to make a nice thin cutting edge. Um, the scales are obviously G10. Um, there's two layers here. So this is one piece and the black part is another piece. So those do come apart. Uh, and that's how I was able to just dye the, uh, the top part here. Um, you have an aluminum backspacer here, which is uh, red. Uh, anodized aluminum, uh, and I don't know why they carried it out this far. I mean, I understand that it's for the lanyard hole, but it, it looks like it could be about half the size and still be able to use a lanyard in this thing. I don't know why they carried it out this far. It just seems kind of like an odd, uh, you know, thing poking out of the back of this knife here. It doesn't help you with uh, the grip at all. Uh, I mean, it doesn't necessarily get, a, get in the way either. It doesn't hurt the knife in any way. It just looks a little weird. Uh, but it is what it is. I still like the knife. Um, uh, quite a bit of um, billboarding on the blade here. You've got the CGRV on this side, and then you've got the serial number and the blade steel here. And for one reason or another, they always seem to want to put China down here on the flipper tab, which I don't know. I wish they didn't do that, but... Again, it is what it is. Can't really change anything, and it's not that big of a deal to make a, a huge deal about it. Um, this is a, a tumble finish, lightly tumble finish, um, and I like it a lot. I like the finish on this blade. It, it's uh, slightly reflective, um, and it's, it's easy to keep clean and everything. So this is a cool, uh, cool little knife. I don't know if they intended for this to function as a glass breaker. Um, it's the only reason that I can think of that they would have carried it out this far. Uh, but it doesn't have an acute tip on it, so I don't know that that would work very well as a glass breaker, but who knows? I guess if you want to, you could try that. <laughs> uh, the the action on this guy is pretty good. Uh, the flipper tab works great, flips right out, and a little bit of encouragement, it falls straight down. Uh, so, you know, the, the detent on this guy is really, really good. I uh, don't have any trouble uh, either light switching it or push buttoning it. Uh, it comes out both ways. Uh, so that works pretty well. Like I said, the uh, the uh, the bearings help it to fall pretty pretty readily. Um, the uh, um, disengagement as well is pretty easy. Uh, this um, liner lock, there's no cutout on the uh, the handle here, but the liner lock comes up just a little bit, uh, just enough for you to be able to uh, disengage the blade. Uh, so that works pretty well. Uh, the balance on this guy. Let's see here, it's maybe a little butt heavy. It's a little further past the, the uh, pivot than I'd like, uh, but it doesn't affect the way the knife works. It's still pretty well balanced. Uh, the ergos are very, very good. There's no finger choil here. There is obviously a sharpening choil, um, but you got plenty of handle. Uh, you know, you can get a full four finger grip on this guy with no problem at all. Uh, you can't really choke up on it at all, at all, and you can't really choke back on it at all. Um, but again, like I said, it's it's pretty comfortable. 
there's no jimping, uh, but these kind of these cutouts here help a little bit with having a grip on the, uh, you know, stopping your thumb from moving up and down. Um, but it could have it could have used a little bit of jimping, I think here. Uh, but again, that's that's not the end of the world. Uh, this again is a liner lock uh, on stainless steel liners, and those are skeletonized, uh, saving a little bit of weight on the blade. Um, and this guy is available. Uh, you can get this again. I'm going to try to link this uh, if I'm able to. Uh, so I'll try to, you know, if you if you if I'm able to link it, you'll see it at the bottom of the uh, the video there. Uh, but you can get this guy. I normally don't recommend Amazon, but that is currently the cheapest place to get this. It's on Amazon for forty eight dollars, uh, and I believe they have the the white version and the blue version. This comes with. Um, uh, white G10 on this top part here, uh, and it also comes in versions with uh, blue G10 and green G10. Uh, those are the only three options. Uh, I don't know that you can find the green G10 option right now, uh, but the, the white one and the blue one are both available on several different sites. Uh, again, you can get it on Amazon for 48 bucks. Uh, you can get it at Knife Center uh, for, I believe, $57. Uh, and uh, if you see it on Blade HQ, do not buy it on Blade HQ. I think they're asking like uh, $78, like $25 more uh, than it is at Knife Center. Uh, so again, if you want this, if you're interested in this, uh, go to either Amazon, which is where it's cheapest, or go to Knife Center, uh, where it is $57. Uh, do not go to Blade HQ to get this guy. You're going to end up paying way too much for it. Um, what else did I want to say to you guys? Oh, uh, the uh, the blade um, on this guy is no uh, blade play, uh, left or right, up or down at all. Forgot to mention that. Uh, and I, I think that's everything about the uh, the knife here. Um, but yeah, again, I, I was hoping maybe you guys could uh, send some comments my way, uh, letting me know, you know, what kind of knives you'd like me to review or, you know, what you want to see on the channel. Uh, if I can get my hands on it, I, I certainly will. Uh, absolutely. 100 percent. And if, again, if I if I'm able to buy it, I'll I'll certainly buy a knife that you guys recommend. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, so I think that that's it for this particular video. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. I'd really, really appreciate that. Stay up, y'all. Take it easy. Bye.